a few weeks ago I announced I was going to be partnering up with Collecting Cars to film some of the more interesting and quirky cars coming up for auction on their site. We kickstarted our partnership by filming an incredibly rare Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren MSO edition and I kind of thought well how on earth are we going to top that video? Apparently with this hello one and all and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. I can't quite believe I'm saying this but today I'm going to be filming and driving this exceptionally rare one of just 28 Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato Speedsters. That means six litre V12 and no roof. And it's a sunny day in the UK. I mean, <laughs> this is gonna be radonkadonk. Now there is a small caveat to said radonkadonk test drive and, and it's a good caveat if you're thinking of buying or, or collecting this car but, but not such a great caveat for our test drive and it's the fact that this car has 37 miles on the clock. 37! That's such a ludicrous number. When I arrived today I actually called the team at Collecting Cars and said are you sure I can drive this thing? And they're like yeah go for it within within reason i have to state so firstly I, I mean applause for them because what what legends for allowing me to do this but i am taking note of the within reason part so this is going to be a incredibly short test drive and we're going to be very careful on the revs and very careful of where i'm going the road that i am going to be driving on has a nice section right at the start and then it all gets a bit boring with speed bumps and stuff which basically means we're going to get all the fun stuff out the way early so stick around after that i promise i hope that the video will still be worth it even once we've uh, done all the fruity bits and i say fruity bits because yes the underpinnings of this car are the same as the vanquish s it has the same naturally aspirated six liter v12 putting out nearly 600 horsepower this was like a last hurrah to the last naturally aspirated v12 aston so i say fruitiness because yes we need a bit of fruitiness so let's come out of drive use our flappy paddles and enjoy the fact that there is no roof and a naturally aspirated v12 are we ready here we go God, I mean, I love an Aston at the best of times, but when it sounds this good, <laughs> and looks this good, but we're going to come back to that. Here's a straight. I mean, remember that the red line is what? Some seven and a bit thousand RPM, and I'm shifting at four or five to be sensible and cautious. And I mean, can you imagine doing like a road trip through the Algarve in this or the Californian coastline? I mean, what an absolute thing. This engine from Aston, this six litre V12, I mean, it hasn't been much, I mean, I mean, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless. Honestly, I wish, I wish this was bedded in. I wish we could just push this all the way up to the red line. Oh, it must sound absolutely outrageous. Can you imagine a tunnel run in this thing? I mean, what the hell, right? This is kind of like my last straight, so let's enjoy this. so good looking that car I can't stop looking at it and as insane as that driving experience just was if I'm really honest it wasn't that surprising in the sense that I've driven a Vanquish S before and this is essentially a roofless incredibly good looking Vanquish S so I, I kind of knew what I was going to get into a heightened experience of a car that I already loved what makes this car so special to me it's not just the sort of bespoke bodywork the fact it's insanely rare but the sort of heritage of Aston Martin Zagato because you know me I love heritage and these two working together stretch 
stretches all the way back to 1960. They don't team up very often, but when they do, it's pretty damn special. It kicked off with the DB4 GT Zagato, often heralded as one of the most beautiful race cars from that 1960s era. Just 20 of the cars were made. They're so sought after, they're so valuable that if you ever see one, like take note of what you're looking at. Don't miss the opportunity to take a thousand photos and just sit down and stare at it because you're not going to see one again very soon. But the, the heritage continues because 25 years later in 1985, Aston Martin and Zagato teamed up again to celebrate that DB4 GT Zagato, but this time in a very 80s ways because of course at the time, Aston were making the boxy muscle car looking V8 Vantage. And when Zagato stepped in, they made the V8 Zagato, which, which could only be from the 80s. I saw one just the other day at Salon Privé and, and the line of it are so sharp and so boxy and so fabulously 80s. Uh, there was another collaboration in the early noughties with the DB7, the DB7 Zagato, and then after that it starts to get a little bit blurred because there was a sort of US specific DB7 Volante, a convertible uh, of the Zagato version. There were some sort of concepts, some prototypes, until 2011 when the V12 Vantage Zagato came along celebrating, yes, you guessed it, another anniversary of the DB4 GT Zagato, this time the 50th anniversary, uh, Aston decided to take some V12 Zagato Vantages, I'm saying that wrong now, V12 Vantage Zagatos racing, and they were so sort of adored, they went, well, let's build them then, and they made 150 of those, what I think are quite iconic, modern day coach built supercars, I just love the V12 Vantage Zagato. Then again, there was a kind of smattering of one-offs here and there, some commissions and some sort of prototypes and some concepts, until in 2016, the Vanquish Zagato came along. Firstly, in coupe form, then in convertible or volante form, until then finally we got the Speedster and the Shooting Brake. Now, historically, when Aston Martin and Zagato have teamed up, they've made 99 models, or 99, sorry, 99 versions of whichever model they've created, except with the Speedster, because as I mentioned at the beginning, they made just 28, so 99 coupes, 99 convertibles, 99 shooting brakes, just 28 speedsters. And they're pretty honest in the fact that it's because realistically, a roof off car, as in a car without a roof, is only really usable in certain countries, in certain territories. It was unrealistic that they'd be able to sell 100 of them. On a day like today, this is the perfect car for the UK. Honestly, I'm looking at this and going, does life get much better? But, but I have to be realistic that this is rare. And this is very rare, especially at this time of year. But anyway, let's not be, let's not get hung up on the weather. A very British thing to do. For now, I want to walk you around the car because I've kind of talked to you a little bit about the history, about the heritage, but it is just stunning and it has so many amazing elements. So let's do a quick walk around and I'll try and point them out to you. Let's kick off at the front with this huge grill that all Vanquish Zagatos get. It's absolutely massive, like a massive old gaping mouth. But what I love is you get this kind of Z look to that front grill, obviously hinting towards the fact it is a Zagato. Uh, massive carbon fibre front split as well. Important to say, the entire body of this car is made out of carbon fibre. So lots of visible carbon fibre as we move around. But remember, under that beautiful blue paintwork is also carbon fibre. Uh, now, all Zagatos get a little bit of red on the Aston Martin badge, which is a really nice touch. Uh, we've got carbon fibre vents up here on the bonnet. Uh, some really nice wheels on this car, matching the beautiful spec, I think beautiful spec, of this Speedster. Uh, the Z Zagato badge on the side there, absolutely love that. It's a very small, subtle hint as to what the car is. Uh, more visible carbon fibre on the side sills. As we make our way up, uh, we've got tons of carbon fibre on the sort of windscreen surround come back to the interior in a second, but we've got to talk about really the main feature, the main focus of the Speedster, which are these kind of flying buttresses. You can see here these two bumps behind the seats. Now, an iconic part of Zagato, Zagato design is the double bubble roof. Whenever you're looking at Zagato, just look at the roof and you'll notice there is a double sort of bubble type look. And so when they had the Speedster, they went, oh, how do we incorporate that? Firstly, we've got to think about aero, but also how do we incorporate our iconic double bubble? And that's where the flying buttresses came in because it hints towards that Zagato design language but does also help with controlling the air. These ones in visible carbon fibre and I have to say it's kind of my favourite look from the back of the car from the side of the car where you can see those flying 
buttresses. Uh, also iconic with the Vanquish Zagatos, these tail lights, absolutely stunning with this kind of little miniature Z uh, little uh, grates or grills there. Um, we also get a huge carbon fiber rear diffuser, this amazing exhaust, which we heard a little bit of, uh, and then an active rear spoiler. But yes, just look at that, the presence of it, but also the sculpture of it. It's just so amazing from the back. But I did mention that the interior uh, also has some special touches. So if we come along here and open up, oh, the beautiful swan-like doors. Um, now, the spec of this is amazing. It's kind of a tan and chocolate, but you'll see lots of Zagato elements. So uh, down here on the sort of sides of the seats, some blue Z Zagato style stitching. Uh, also on the, on the door panels, you can see some of that Z style stitching, lots of carbon fiber running down the center of the car. Uh, we also get a Z just there between the two seats on the sort of body, body colored panel. Um, a lovely Vanquish Zagato kick plate or side plate just there on the doors you step in. And then quite an interesting feature with this car is that traditionally you'd have rear seats in a Vanquish, uh, but obviously with these flying buttresses, they're inaccessible. So you get a ton of carbon fiber, again, exposed visible carbon fiber where those seats would be. So it is truly a special, special place to sit, but also a special, special car to look at. I am fully aware of how lucky I am to have not only spent the day checking this car out but also to have driven it. So huge thanks once again to the owner and to Collecting Cars for arranging this quite insane opportunity. If you're interested in bidding on this car you just want to read more about it I'll put a link to the Collecting Cars website below. They always have amazing stuff on there so it's well worth a browse. If you've liked today's video give it a thumbs up. I'd be interested comment below which of the four Vanquish Cigatos would you have after today's experience for me it's definitely the speedster, even in the UK. So yes, make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.